mean, if you were going to start an underage sex trafficking ring, Acorn's got great advice for you. Hi, I'm Michael Moynihan for Reason TV, and today we are here with Mike Flynn, the editor-in-chief of BigGovernment.com. Mike, you've made a bit of a splash recently uh, with a series of videos uh, about uh, Acorn. Give our viewers uh, who haven't seen these uh, ubiquitous videos, uh, what, are they ready? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. What, uh, what's on the videos, uh, and, uh, and uh, then how, how you obtained them. Right. Uh, real quick, uh, the videos um, kind of relay the saga, if you will, of two filmmakers, uh, activists, James O'Keefe and Hannah Giles, who go to a number of Acorn offices posing um, as a pimp and a prostitute. Uh, and they are seeking uh, Acorn's assistance to get a grant or a loan for a house uh, to run a brothel out of. Um, and in the course of the interview, they also reveal that that this brothel will not only house Hannah Giles and her operation, but also a dozen underage El Salvadoran immigrants uh, who will also be turning tricks. And amazingly enough, um, you know, so far we've shown videos from six different offices, uh, and in all six, the Acorn employees uh, went along with it, uh, didn't question it, uh, and also uh, were extraordinarily helpful <laughs> in trying to find ways to make this work for the pimp and the prostitute. I mean, what's its connection to, to the administration? Well, uh, Barack Obama, um, the one job he's had outside of government is as a community organizer uh, and worked very closely with ACORN. Um, it, we are going to be telling a story uh, probably in the next week about how community organizing was done in Chicago uh, with ACORN, SCIU, Barack Obama, and Jeremiah Wright. Um, and it's, uh, it's a pretty rich story uh, that includes a scene in which ACORN, true story, clogged up emergency rooms to stop ambulances from coming there because they're trying to unionize the hospital. Why does the average person care if there is an institutional problem at a place like Acorn? You know, Acorn has a very large role to play in the housing debacle we just went through. Um, you know, they, they had a very, very refined business of shaking down banks and financial institutions uh, and, for, and getting them uh, through coercion to get them to make loans to risky borrowers. Um, I'm not saying they're totally responsible for the housing meltdown, but they have a role to play in that. Um, they also, you know, we, we have uh, one um, consequence of the journalism we've done on this is we now have in our possession a lot of internal ACORN documents that come from whistleblowers. And one thing that's really interesting is, is that we have, and we'll release this soon, a, uh, a handbook for how they organize and do community organizing. Uh, and it's a really revealing document. It's fascinating. Let me pick up a criticism uh, from Acorn, who mm -hmm. says that um, you know you guys were kicked out of some offices, or not you guys, but the, the two that made the videos. Um, uh, you say that's not true. No, uh, we will. Um, before this is all over, you will see video from every office that James and Hannah um, went to. We released the videos in a very deliberate way, as you know. I mean, we, we kind of rolled them out slowly. Um, we first went with Baltimore and then with D.C. Uh, and immediately after that, Acorn put out a statement that said we were kicked out of New York, kicked out of L.A., kicked out of Philadelphia, kicked out of San Diego, kicked out of Miami. Um, on Monday, we released New York, so that was a lie. Uh, later that week, we released San Diego, so that was a lie. Um, they have put a lot of stock in the fact that we were kicked out of Philadelphia, but we just released a video yesterday uh, which shows we are not kicked out of Philadelphia. Uh, the Acorn employee there was, was trying to help James and Hannah. Um, so, you know, we will show every video um, of every office that they, they went to, uh, and we'll let the facts speak for themselves. You know, by any objective standards, this is, this is a, a pretty big story. Uh, how did the media react, and uh, who got it right and who got it wrong? John Stewart and Jay Leno got it right. What's remarkable is how unfazed the Acorn people are by this question and situation. This is clearly not the first time they've been hearing this. Oh, you're a prostitute and a pimp, and you'd like to work through the tax implications of said relationship. Hey, uh, Tanya, get me Form 7D. In South Park. <laughs> and so, I would like to see if there are any housing loan opportunities for some of my employees, and also what kind of corporate tax I should be filing under. And exactly what kind of business are you running? It's a kissing company. And the big media mostly got it wrong. You know, the media initially totally ignored the story. Um, and it was really, you, you could almost, if you did a timeline, it was after Jon Stewart weighed in uh, that the media started to weigh in. Um, 
And it was very funny. I don't know if you saw it. It was like within the first two days of the videos coming out, Jon Stewart did a phenomenal piece um, that he totally got what was wrong with this scenario. Uh, and he also called out the media for ignoring it. Well, this is an impressive expose. I would love to know the intrepid journalist who broke this story. 60 Minutes, the AP, uh, that guy who gets the Predators. Now you're, I'm just telling the whole world, you're not a pimp. You're just playing one on our show. I'm one of the and, worst. And you played it on those tapes. Yeah, I'm one of the whitest guys ever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Where were the real reporters on this story? You know what, investigative media? Give me a camera three. Where the hell were you? And when the media finally got around to the story, the first thing they tried to do was attack Andrew Breitbart, James, and Hannah. I mean, do you also see this as a kind of a morality tale uh, with uh, media coverage and, and in what stories the media covers? And, and, and is, it, it is. I mean, is it an example of bias? I mean, is that Absolutely. fair to say? I mean, you know, here you have on video, I mean, just, just try to think of the hypothetical situation in which an office in six so far different offices, branch offices, organization, provides advice for trafficking in underage girls, <laughs> sex trafficking. Um, the idea that members of the media would try to defend that or ignore it because of that organization's politics uh, is pretty disturbing. Uh, I mean, you know, think of any company, if you went into six different Starbucks <laughs> and asked the managers, you know, I've got some people I want to smuggle in, can you help me? Um, you know, there would be protests outside of every Starbucks, as there should be legitimately. The thing that I find really, uh, frankly, disturbing is that when you look at these videos, the employees do not even blanch. Um, they don't flinch. Uh, and they provide really helpful advice. I mean, if you were going to start an underage sex trafficking ring, Acorn's got great advice for you. Um, you know, so you, you, the, 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 it begs the question, what do they hear every day? What do they hear on a daily basis? Uh, that they don't even recoil from this kind of tale. Are you sitting on other material? Uh, is, this, is this a one-off deal, or are you going to keep on uh, making splashes? Uh, what's uh, basically what's coming up next? Well, I mean, w I, hopefully we'll keep on making splashes. I mean, un 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 I guess, unfortunately, there's a lot of stories to tell <laughs> right now. Um, we, we do have more videos. Uh, those will be released at the appropriate time. How many? Uh, we have more. Yeah, more. Um, we, you know, part of this, uh, the design of our strategy for rolling out is, frankly, to deny ACORN information. We're going to tell the SAIU story. Um, we're going to tell the story of the scam that's going on on the public right now that ACORN has said they're going to do an internal review on their own. Uh, and they've appointed people like John Podesta, Andy Stern, to oversee this internal review. I mean, this is like having the Fox do an audit of the hen house. I mean, it's like ridiculous. Um, so, I mean, those, those are some stories to tell. I mean. And, you know, we, one of the great benefits of the splash we made is that lots of people are coming forward with lots of stories. Um, unfortunately, there is corruption and the intrusion of big government everywhere, both at the local, state, and federal level. Um, and we're going to be telling those stories. Mike? Hey, Michael. Thanks very much. Thanks for uh, coming back to Reason. Uh, for Reason TV, I'm Michael Moynihan.